So you might be saying, Aaron, how are you a fantasy reader and you haven't read these books yet? Well, to answer your question, um, I don't know. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to get through all the books that I can. Uh, there is a lot of beefy books in this list that I'm going to talk about in terms of you know, massively popular fantasy books that I still have not read yet. Uh, I'm going to go over 10 today, and I'm also going to talk about what I think the book is about, because most of these that I'm about to you know, walk through, I've not even read the blurb. So I'm going to go off the title, maybe the cover as well, and actually see um, you know, what I think the book is about, and maybe talk about the reasons why I haven't read it yet. Let's just go ahead and just dive into it, the first one being one that I think a lot of people are going to recognize, being The Name of the Wind, right, by Patrick Rothfuss. Rothfuss. Rothfuss, okay. This is a book that I've seen uh, compared to a lot of books I'm really uh, a big fan of, especially the Sunder series by Christopher Rocchio, in terms of the prose. So what I know about this book right here is that apparently it has super um, poetic prose and it's fantasy, I think. And I mean, besides that, looking at the cover, I see some sort of guitar, some sort of instrument. And with that in mind, I mean, maybe there's some singing going on in here, similar to, you know, Lord of the Rings a little bit. Maybe we get some verses going on in here. But Name of the Wind, right? That kind of reminds me of What's that movie called? Words, wind, wind word. Okay, I'm sorry. Gone with the wind. Yeah, I don't know if it's anywhere remotely close to that, but that's kind of what I uh, am leaning towards. Gone with the wind. So what this book is about, I th I'm going to guess that we have a guy named Wind, and uh, he goes around, uses a guitar, and he uses that guitar as a weapon of some sort. Am I right? I don't know. I really don't know. But... That is Name of the Wind. I don't know when I'm going to get to this, um, but I'm a big fan of Chris Rocky's writing style in terms of that super poetic prose that just you know, flows off the tongue. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one. I just don't know when. Have you read this one yet? Also, when I go through all these books, if there's one here that you know that you read uh, and you're a really big fan of it, let me know down below so that I can add it a little bit higher to my TBR. Okay? So that's book number one. It's going to be Name of the Wind. When will I get to that? I don't know just yet. Okay, buddy. The next one might anger some people because I haven't read it yet. And I'm and I'm really sorry. I apologize, but I will get to it at some point. And this is an author I know so many people are going to recognize because uh, it was a lot of people's introduction into the fantasy genre. A lot of people start with this author because their name is huge now, with that being Brandon Sanderson. And no, it's not the Stormlight Archive. I have not read Mistborn just yet. So this is a series, I know a lot of people, when they get into Brandon Sanderson in fantasy, they start with, you know, Mistborn uh, a lot of the time. Uh, versus me going straight into Installment Archive first with The Way of Kings, um, with that being my very first introduction into Brandon Sanderson, which I really, really enjoyed. I had a fantastic time in that series, and I'm up to date all the books that are out right now. Mistborn, on the other hand, I haven't read a single one. I think there's also like a sequel trilogy or series in this universe, but I have no idea what this is about. For whatever reason, uh, I just keep picturing uh, Jay Kristoff's Nevernight series in terms of the main character being uh, Mia, in terms of her having these like shadow abilities. I don't know why I'm picturing that type of scenario in this book. I could be way off. But the only reason why I think that's because it's called Mistborn. Instead of shadows, this person, the character uses Mist. I could be wrong. Most likely I am. I don't know. But I know a lot of people love this series, and I see, like, on, even on Instagram, there's, like, Mistborn Mondays. If there's a whole day dedicated to a single series, I think it's pretty popular. But, you know, I haven't read this yet, and I'm looking forward to getting it when I do, eventually. Alright, the next one, if you follow me on social media, on X or Instagram, you might be calling me a liar right now, because you know I actually just started this series, but I wanted to include it because I'm uh, in the very early stages of reading this book with that one being Gardens of the Moon, the first book in the Malzahn series. All right, this is one that I know is kind of blowing up right now because of the Broken Binding series, uh, unveiling the amazing artwork for the you know, rebranded editions of this series. Uh, and I know this book you know, holds up on its own in terms of a lot of people really enjoying it and having you know, a whole stack of the mass paperback editions on their shelf. In my case, I have not read this just yet. I've heard from multiple people that it's very dense 
Uh, it can be a little bit hard to get through. I was a little bit apprehensive about getting into this because it's, it takes a lot of brain power to get through it and actually understand you know, what the heck is going on. So I started this maybe a week ago um, and I'm actually on page 84 at the moment, so I'm not too far in. And everything that I've heard about it being dense and hard to understand, I think it perfectly lines up with my experience so far. Uh, I'm not really sure what is happening just yet. There is a lot of characters. There's a lot of bloody action. And I'm I'm just confused. I'm confused on what's going on. And I don't really know who like the main characters are. There's a few names that pop up more than others. I'm just really unsure on where the story is going to go. But from what I've heard from a lot of people is that that is the experience that you should feel in terms of going into this book. So yeah, that's me right now. I'm just lost adrift on an ocean island yelling Wilson trying to figure out what the heck is going on. But I'm going to keep going through this. Or I'm definitely going to finish the first book. Uh, and depending on my experience with this one, we will see if I continue into the Malazan series. Next up is going to be a book by Fonda Lee being Jade City. So this particular edition right here is from the Broken Binding team. And this one is very, very nice. Uh, it has some really cool sprayed edges as well. Or what do you call it? Digital edges. But this one, I believe, is an Asian-inspired fantasy tale that is full of action. And I really don't know what to make of it just yet besides Jade is somehow involved in this series. I don't know the extent of what that means. But I've heard a lot of people love this series. So at some point, I mean, I have the book in my hand now. I want to get into it because I really haven't read too many Asian inspired fantasy books just yet. I mean, usually when you go into fantasy, it's um, medieval, uh, European based, right? This one is a little bit different. So I'm really looking forward to you know something a little bit more unique or a little bit different compared to the fantasy that I have been reading. So that's Jade City. I have not read it, but I'm looking forward to getting into, especially with this really cool edition right here, right? All right, the next book up is going to be The Grace of Kings by Ken Lu. Ken Lee. I mean, it's three letters. I, I, somehow I keep mispronouncing it. I don't know if I'm saying it right or wrong, but The Grace of Kings, right? This one is a pretty chunky book, to be honest. I mean, it's going close to 600 plus pages of content here, but yeah, book one of the Dandelion Dynasty. Uh, I have heard great things about it. Similar to the other books that are going to be in my list. I have not read it just yet. But looking at the cover, we have this helmet that's kind of broken and cracked there on the ground with a dandelion growing through the cracks. So if I had to guess, we go through some crazy climactic ending or some sort of battle that just took place. We have something rising from the ashes. The meaning of justice changes in a revolution. So I think I'm kind of close in uh, the battle taking place and then some sort of revolution takes place with this dandelion coming through the cracks. All right, the next book I've seen all over the place on BookTube and Book Talk and Book Instagram, whatever you want to call it, Bookstagram. All right, Being the Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. So this one is kind of strange for me looking at the cover because the orange kind of backdrop here uh, kind of reminds me of just like a classic fantasy tale. But apparently this is grimdark, I think. I'm pretty sure this leans into the grimdark genre or subgenre of fantasy, but I'm not entirely sure because I'm not 100% sure what happens in this book. But from what I've seen is that we follow a main character, I think. I don't know their name, but... Uh, they get really good at something. It could be using the bow based off of what I'm seeing here on the cover. Maybe it's using a sword. Maybe the sword becomes an extension of your arm and they're really good at it I mean, really quickly. I've heard a lot about this book. I've heard some mixed things in terms of our main character being kind of OP. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't read it just yet. So have you read The Poppy War? Yeah, let me know. All right, the next one is going to be a book that I know the Library of the Viking freaking loves because he talks about it uh, a lot, being The Lies of Lacamora by Scott Lynch. So this one is another Broken Binding Edition with these pretty cool sprayed edges on the sides here and a very nice uh, interior artwork display on the end uh, pages here, which looks really, really pretty. And it's really cool naked hardback too with that foil on the top. Looks so good. But I've heard a lot of praise for this book here, especially from you know, booktubers and other people online. I do not know what to make of this one just yet. But looking at the cover, it looks like we have a guy 
just kind of perched on this pole right here, kind of overlooking the city. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks like this is underwater right here with these poles sticking above the water. So maybe this guy kind of like just hops from pole to pole to pole and gets around the city that way. Um, that could be the case, I don't know, but the city in the backdrop looks really cool. All right, again, going back to kind of that uh, European type of vibe, I think maybe this guy is a liar and his name is Lakamora. I don't know. So the next book is going to be The Curse of the Mist Wraith by Janie Wartz right here. And this is book number one in a very long series. Actually, I don't know how long it is, but apparently it's pretty long. Wars of Light and Shadow. And just recently, I've seen a lot of people in my booktube community uh, praising this book in the series. Because I think a book in the series just came out not too long ago. And a lot of people are freaking loving this series. For one thing, I don't know what it's about, but I do love the cover. I think it has a really cool old school vibe to it. Like looking at it, we have a really cool looking portal that's in the center of it that just shows this huge mountain or something that has something glowing on the very top. And it just has a really cool you know, ambiance to it. And the book itself is sitting close to 6,000 ratings on Goodreads. So a lot of people are enjoying it. But at some point, I need to get into it, right? The curse of the Mist Wraith. Just sounds cool alone. Or right, the next one, you might be very disappointed in me. And I just wanna apologize now because I haven't read a single book by this author. And just to give you uh, the first and last name, just the first letter of each, R.H. Robin Hobb, right? I have not read a single book by Robin Hobb just yet. And the book that I'm talking about is the first one in the Far Seer trilogy, being The Assassin's Apprentice. I've seen uh, Robin Hobb mentioned several times when I'm venturing into you know, the fantasy genre. And I've seen a lot of books you know, talk about how you know, Robin Hobb is a really good comparison to other books because of how big Robin Hobb is with her series. And I know the Farseer trilogy or the Farseer series is expansive and large. And there's a few books in between a lot of people do not like, but like at the same time, so I'm not really sure. I know a lot of people love the first one being you know, The Assassin's Apprentice. I mean, looking at this one, this one has close to 340,000 ratings on Goodreads. So that is a huge amount. And if I had to guess what's happening here is that we have an assassin who is a apprentice and they have a job to do as an apprentice in order to become a full-on fledged assassin. And the next one, uh, the last one that I have here for you guys is by an author that is huge. So huge that he has usually his own section in any bookstore that you go to. And this is one that I know was adapted. I have not seen the adaptation. I have not read the book just yet. But I know it's not um, a huge book, but it leads to a pretty large series. With that being Stephen King's The Dark Tower. Book number one being The Gunslinger. So looking at the cover of this one, and we have kind of like this, uh, we have this kind of this Western dune holding a gun or something. Uh, he's looking down at a bird of some sort who is sitting on, I think, a skeleton, right? In some sort of wasteland with, guess what? A dark tower in the background. And with the title being The Gunslinger, I have to guess that we have guns somehow involved in this. And I'm just picturing something in my mind in terms of a guy going like this. With two guns in both hands just shooting away could that happen in the book i mean i am i'm hoping so because that's kind of what i'm seeing in my mind from what i've heard the first book i know is not i mean from what i've heard that the first book is not the best one in the series so hopefully it's not uh, in a spot to where i don't enjoy it at all because then i will not be as uh, as thrilled to get into the remaining books in the series Six hundred thousand ratings on goodreads so obviously this is one that is huge for a lot of people, with this being the first one in a pretty expansive series. One that was adapted too, right? So people obviously enjoy it. I just haven't got around to it yet. In terms of Stephen King, I've only read one book by Stephen King called Later. And to be honest, I wasn't thrilled with that one. I didn't love it at all. So I'm not sure if Stephen King is my guy, but I also haven't read a lot of books by him. But I know he is huge. And that, my friend, is 10 books I have not read just yet that are massively popular in the fantasy genre. Have you read any of these books just yet? Uh, which ones were your favorite? Let me know down below. And which one should I add to my TBR first? You know, besides Gardens of the Moon, 
know, the first Malazan book, because I'm currently reading that right now, even though I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm getting through it. All right, so you let me know down below, and uh, I hope you have a good one. Keep reading. Peace. Thank you.